Shalom Saints, welcome to another episode of The Upper Room, uh, where we loose and bind uh, biblical topics of varying degrees and nature. Uh, it's a safe space in which we can investigate, share our ideas and experiences of what it's like to walk with Messiah. And um, as ever, I'm much obliged for you for taking the time to, to join myself and my guest today. And um, it's always a privilege. Now, with regards to today's guest, um, it's my pleasure on this uh, platform to be able to um, not only share and, and, and showcase and uh, provide a platform for those that are on the walk. Um, I've been really fortunate to be able to go through uh, many different uh, demographics of those who congregate on this messianic walk. And um, we've got many flavors, many backgrounds, many histories. And uh, it's been great so far. We've had husbands, wives, mothers, a real broad spectrum of all those that are in Christ. And today is a great opportunity, I think, to go into an area that we've not been able to share before on this, uh, on this platform. I think nonetheless it's it's arguably the most important element of that uh, spectrum of a demographic, shall we say, uh, and we'll be looking at what it is to be of the younger generation walking out the Torah and being on this messianic faith. So today's guest, uh, no pressure, uh, it's not like you're representing a whole generation or anything, <laughs> But um, today's guest is is our uh, representative of what it means to be a, a teenager in the Torah. Uh, as I said, we've had many different um, perspectives, uh, but today's are, are going to be, hopefully, you are willing, a unique insight in, in what it means to be um, young and in the Torah. So without further ado, young Jacob, how are we? Shalom. Pleasure. Thank you for having me, man. No, I, I really appreciate you coming on like, when I asked you to come on, it was like, yeah, so I'm thinking about doing a podcast. What do you think? And you're just like, yeah, bro, I'm down. And it's like, <laughs> no hesitation, no fear. It's just like yeah. pure Joshua, Caleb, like, let's do it. Mm. And I really, um, I really respect and appreciate that. Also, I really appreciate you taking the time to do it because I know it's a very, uh, it's a busy time for you, isn't it? Yeah, GCSE is not, not a joke whatsoever, but yeah. Ooh. I just no, you're fine, man. Oh, you're just this, oh, pressure's getting to me, man. <laughs> he was he was talking it up. Yeah, it'll be fine, bro. It'll be fine. And now <laughs> he's getting all nervous and fidgety. No, no, you were saying that uh, we were speaking before about um, your GCSEs and like you're in a season of pressure. Mm. And um, how how is that like working out for you at the moment? Uh, it's a blessing in disguise. I'm not gonna lie to you because in that pressurized environment of school and oh GCSEs exams. It's like coming to Almond House and every Shabbat, every Saturday, and just getting to relax and leave it at the door with my shoes and just yeah. and just forget about it for a you know solid three hours, just making time for the Lord. A blessing, trust me. Amazing. Okay, so let's start. Um, let's start at the beginning before you came to the Almond House and found yourself on this walk. Um, has God always been in your life? Have you always been in the faith? Is this something that's been there from an early age, or is this something that's progressed over time? If you could just give us a bit of um, a bit of a background in terms of like, you know, uh, growing up, your upbringing, and how you came um, closer, more aligned to this this walk. Yeah, um, my based on faith, I think my childhood isn't anything special because I think a lot of people can relate to it. I was Christian only by name. Right. You know, I was like, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, but. There was no substance to my belief, no weight to my words when it came to that. Um, and I think, I like, again, a lot of people listening, I was raised very Catholic, went to a Catholic school um, <laughs> right next to the cathedral. So every trip was like, oh, we're going to the cathedral again. Um, and I think that was really like an indoctrination for me. Like, oh, yeah, this legalist thing, I've got, I've got to do this, this and this to get to heaven. This is great. I'm, I'm surely getting into heaven now. And that was just my upbringing. Um, not at home, but like at school and in the church, in the parish, you know, that's that's what it was. And slowly but surely, I just distanced myself from it and 
really realized like this this isn't for me the catalyst i think for me walking away from the faith was the passing in, the fa- in, in my family right my, my dad passed away when i was 10 years old and wow yeah that was i was just in my room the night i found out i was in my room like how could you do this to me like you know this, this benevolent lord of all the universe you've got the power to save every life and you choose to take this one like it was just a, it was just an anger it was a it was, wow. a, it was a bitterness and for I think the, the preceding two years like two full years I was just completely atheist and I wasn't one of those atheists where you didn't know I was one of, one of, one of those atheists where you definitely heard me talk about the Lord and you know mock the Lord and say oh science is the way before you even spoke to me you'd, you'd hear me from the corridor oh this isn't the way trust me it was the big bang. It wasn't no hand of God, you know. Wow. This, this and that, this and that. Everyone was like, "Oh, you're going to hell." Be like, "Oh, sound," you know. I was, I was a blasphemer, a mocker at the age of eleven, <laughs> when when I didn't know anything. I thought I, I knew, you know, the beginnings of the universe, and that really started on my, uh, well, that really started me on my path of going down this long rabbit hole of where do we come from? Why has this happened to me? Who else has it happened to? Who is this Lord who, who rules the world? And, that was early in, in high school. So that transition from primary school to high school, those those years of nine years old to, to like 12 years old were a real time for discovery and a time for self-reflection for me. And I think me truly coming to the Lord happened gradually, but I can I can pinpoint the moment. Um, I, I was sitting in my living room and someone someone invited me to church some girl in my school, she went, oh, come to church. Because we were just friends, so she didn't want, she wanted to socialise with me. So I say, okay, put on my Sunday best, which is just a bomber jacket and some jeans. And <laughs> oh, um, Come as you are, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I said, mommy, mommy, can you can you drop me a church? And she was like, what? <laughs> is this the same Jacob? She was like, yeah, yeah, drop me a church, drop me a church. Um, she dropped me a church. I've said hi, I've gone in, hadn't listened to a word of the same. I've just been chatting, chatting, chatting. Come home. And my sister said, why is your hair tied up? And I've gone, oh, I was just in church. She was like, oh, you, you found Jesus? And I went, no. She goes, why are you in church then? You know, church isn't for socializing. And in my head, I'm thinking, who do you think you are? I'm trying to you know, know my beliefs. You, you don't know who I am. You don't know, you know what I'm thinking. How, how do you know if I know the Lord or not? And that started the question. I'm like, do I know the Lord? Do I, do I actually believe in some higher power? And then after a few weeks of just thinking, like, what? that was a weird reaction. Usually I'd just be like, yeah, whatever. Um, I come to realize that th- these past two years of me being an atheist wasn't me having an absence of belief in the Lord, but it was rather me throwing a little you know, temper tantrum at the Lord, saying, oh, being angry. Um, because I realized that any chance I got, I would talk about you know, our father. Um, and, and like literally any single chance I got, it was, oh, yeah, well, let's talk about the Lord then, because <laughs> so I, was, I was making an apologetic for people with my stupidity, and it was a, it was a weird you know, moment of discovery, like, wow, I've just been, I've, I've felt him watching me this whole time, and I've just been acting up because I knew he was watching. And uh, Yeah, it was, a, it was a weird moment in my life. And from that point on, it was like, okay, this is serious now, because now, now I've recognized his presence in my life. And I've, and I've recognized his, his moving in any action I do. And um, yeah, that was like a, I hit a plateau then though, because there was like a stagnation in discovery and, you know. And, and, and what age was this, do you reckon roughly? <sighs> like, that was like like 12. Right. Um, yeah, 12, I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and, um, and then we get to 13 and I'm, Saying, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. When people are like, oh, what, what, what do you believe in? Oh, I'm a Christian. Do you believe in God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you believe in Jesus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, there's no really searching. I didn't really have a hunger for it. I had just come away from raw stupidity um, and really found my footing. And I don't, I don't remember the moment. I do remember the moment. Um, my brother, Josh. Shout out, Josh. Yeah, big up. We're at a dinner table. Whose birthday was it? Whose birthday was it? 
I think it was his birthday. I think it was his like twenty first birthday. We always do like little dinky meals for him because he's very humble. He doesn't like big birthday parties or anything. I'm like, nah, we'll go out for a meal. We'll go out for a meal. So I like Frankie and Benny's. I remember yeah, it was Frankie and Benny's. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie and Benny's, and the in the Edge Lanes um, Mall, and um, we started praying over the food. And I'm a bit like, whoa, like what are you doing, bro? We're in public, you know, you know, like oh, put that away, bro. Save it when we get home. Yahweh, Hova, Al Shaddai, Adonai, Abaya, El Elyon, Creative Ever, Native Moon, Universe. And I'm like, what, what is he saying? Like, whoa. Like, was that Hebrew? What, what, what was that, bro? He was like, let the Ruach HaKadosh fill this family. And I'm like, what's the Ruach HaKadosh? What are you talking about? <laughs> whoa, whoa. We're in England, bro. <laughs> Where have you been? Because he, he was like, <laughs> he was out of commission. We, he had nowhere to be. Like, he was, you couldn't find him anywhere for like two weeks. And all of a sudden, he comes back. He's let his beard grow out and he's like, we're talking about the Ruach HaKadosh. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> who are you, man? And, um, and um, yeah, my mum goes to take my little sister to the toilet. And I'm like, bro, what were you saying then? And he goes, bro. And I'm like, I'm like, whoa. And he goes, bro, I met this guy called Joe. I met this place called the Almond House. He changed my life. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, what? He's acting like a madman, and I'm like, okay, uh, okay. And certain, I couldn't get that word out of my head, and I remembered it, like, where I remembered it. Like, usually with languages, I'm not really, like, I'll hear something in Spanish or French, and I'll be like, I'll forget it the day after. Three weeks go by, and this this word, Ruach HaKadosh, is going round in my head, and I'm like, what is that? Because it sounded so nice to my ear. Right, yeah. And I was like, that sounds so sick. Like, what? <laughs> what is that? What does that mean? And I start asking him, and he's like, "Come, come with me." And I'm like, uh, "No, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to. I'm not, not wasting a Saturday." And he's like, "Nah, nah, nah, just come." I'm like, "Nah, nah, nah." So you know, um, that started my, you know, my journey basically. Um, that, what does that mean? Um, and I think that's definitely a, a motto. What does that mean? Right. Going throughout my walk, because um, I I started praying over my food. Uh, I think like a lot of little brothers, that was that was it. Just copying my older brother. Um, like if, if he did something, I'd be like, oh yeah, I guess I'm doing that now. Um, so they're praying over my food, praying over my food. And it was a very private thing. Um, I'd do it very quietly. I'd just close my eyes and I wouldn't say it out loud. Um, I'd, <laughs> it got to, it got, bro. <laughs> it got, I got so zealous with it that if I was eating a meal and I took like a 20 minute break, I'd bless the food again <laughs> because I was like, technically it's a different meal. <laughs> so we're like, yeah, come on. Um, there's no statute of limitation of when a meal is a different meal. Um, yeah, I've seen you eat, like you you don't eat one meal. That's like, it's like a series of uh, <laughs> episodes. <laughs> so yeah. You, yeah, you probably do. It's a valid one, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a mad little time. Um, I was this close to blessing every bite. It was, uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a, it was a weird thing, man. Um, but yeah, and then we went on holiday to Tenerife, and again, just following my brother's footsteps, like just, just anything he did, I'd do, like, like a baby learning how to walk. Um, he goes, Yeshua. I'm like, oh, that's a nice little word. What does that mean? And then um, he, he was praying over his food again. He, my whole walk space. It's all about food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to those of you who know me, that's not surprising whatsoever. But um, yeah, and he's blessing over his food, and he says in Yeshua's name, and I'm like, what? So then I changed how I prayed. If I prayed normally for anything, I'd say in Jesus' name. But if I prayed over food, it'd be in Yeshua's name. And then slowly, every prayer, like it was like taking shifts in Jesus' name, in Yeshua's name, in Jesus. And then every single prayer would be in Yeshua's name. And I was like, that's just Jesus, isn't it? Like, I didn't really know the Lord. I'd felt his spirit inside of me. I'd felt him moving in my life. I'd accepted him. I was actively seeking him and following him. But all I knew was how to sort of proclaim his name in blessing my morning cereal. Like, that's that's all I was doing in practice. Um, So, yeah, one day he goes, this is after Sakat, so, yeah, Bereshit. He says, "Come, come, like you know, just, just come, like one, one little, one, one day, just try it." I'm like, "Nah, nah, nah, nah." The next Friday, he goes, "You coming, bro?" And I'm like, "Yeah, go on." 
this is Noah. Now, <laughs> for, for the listeners, you probably know anyway. You've probably watched it online, or you've probably seen a, a teaching in person. Noah is not a joke. It is. <laughs> it is a serious tour of origin, bro. So <laughs> what the what's funny is that your brother's first time here was a serious tour portion. Mm. It was Pincas, mm. where he slays the. Uh, the guys outside the tabernacle and i remember like it there was mad stuff popping off when it when josh came so i'm not surprised that yours was uh was a heavy hitter as well yeah sons of thunder in it um but yeah i was sort of thrown into the deep end giants satan is real in the world all that all that stuff right and i was just sitting there like what <laughs> and it, was this your very first one very first wow. ever torah portion right um, go on yeah and i'm listening i'm taking it in and it was, it was over, yeah. It was, and from that moment, up until like a few weeks ago, I just didn't miss a day. Every right. single Saturday, I was in Joe's living room, listening to a teaching, taking notes, changed, like he was right, like I should, <laughs> I should have listened to it earlier, it changed <laughs> my life. It was a, yeah, it was weird. Like I said before, like there was a plateau, but this time it was no plateau, like it was like a, it was a, how Tommy describes it is like a, a cycle. It's not, it's a spiral upwards. Right. And closer and closer to him. That was beautiful. And that's what my walk became. It was no plateau whatsoever. It just, whew. and before I knew it, I was like preaching to my friends and I was saying, no, 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 don't do Christmas because this, this isn't, oh, no, 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 trust me, trust me, Connie Pork, bro, you'll get names. <laughs> <laughs> you need to fast, get rid of them parasites, bro. I'm like, what? Just eat the chocolate, Jake, what are you doing? Um, yeah, it was, it was just like that. Um, and every time I describe it to someone, that up until just this conversation, I've realized how quick and how sudden it was. But every time I described it to someone, they were like, whoa. And I've been like, what are you talking about? That's not a tea. They're like, yeah, accepting the Torah that quickly after one Torah portion, after like a few years of contemplation, like that's crazy. Because I was, I became an atheist and I was a lukewarm Christian. And then a, a matter of moments, I was, I was on the Torah path. The Lord just called me to it. He said, you're doing this one way or the other. So just do it now. That's beautiful, bro. There's so much, like there's so much to unpack there. But like just off the bat, like I'm always super grateful for being able to um, spend time with uh, guys from the fellowship. Like when it's not just Shabbat or, you know, and you actually get to know know each other and, and know things that uh, you, you didn't previously know. So what you said there about your childhood and uh, your father passing, I, I had no idea. Um, and I think the um, the awareness of, of what you're describing there at such a young age is, is, um, is, is really potent. And I think it's amazing how you've been able to like retrospectively look back and come to a lot of conclusions that guys in the faith take a long time to get to. Um, and I think it's fascinating. Obviously, like you said, this this element of like, right, you accepted the Torah real quick and it has been like a fast track. Um, but the context being that, like like you said, the Lord's always been there and uh, it's just a case of your fluctuating, coming away uh, and going back to it. And then albeit in a, in a manner where I think from an intellectual point of view, like a, um, a questioning, a rebellion and even a bitterness... Uh, uh, a form of friction towards your um, understanding or knowledge of God is like you, you you'd arguably describe like suffering a bereavement at that that age or at any age um, is a, is a, it can catapult you in into a direction of um, questioning life and what it's all about and I think some people have these milestone moments like in their lifetime some people don't get to like until they're like 50 60 until they've actually um, come to a, a, a point of um, like real heavy um, event or a questioning of reality, like the paradigm's completely shifted and you're actually going, what is this all about? But I think what's, what's amazing about yourself is that that questioning, um, obviously you said in the context of like you had beef with God, basically like why did this take place? But then also as you've grown older, you've always had this inquisitive nature of like, what's going on and what is this all about? Mm. And uh, I can talk from my own experience of growing up and always being dissatisfied 
<clears throat> not completely, but like the bottom line was, I, what is going on? Like, what is what is this all around, all, all about? Because I can't rest until I know that. And I think when you, when you, like, I'm trying to like wrap my head around what I've witnessed with you in particular is the uh, exponential speed and um, the depth of what uh, has taken place. You've got like that background. And then if you speak to many people in, in this messianic faith, they'll say like, Yah is moving. He's doing things quickly like when you're onto it it's like you are getting like fast tracked and you're gonna get like um the crash course in in what it means to be like a disciple of of yeshua and so part of what i I, i'm really like excited about sharing this with you and and people that watch this is uh seeing that take place is is so exciting and so cool because there are those that um have lived you know, arguably a lifetime and are doing and experiencing the things that you're, you're doing. Um, so when you, when you, when you've got to that spot of like, and you've, you've articulated that so beautifully, I, I, you've just saved me a massive job basically, <laughs> but like how, I mean, you touched on it briefly, but how do you think that's, you said it's changed your life what what does that mean to you like personally and and looking forward like what what does that actually mean that's changed your life because it is really hard to articulate to people around you um particularly to those who aren't in the faith like how has that really impacted your life um whether it's your behaviors your your perspective and how you go about how you go about your business i think the root of it is your definition of your life. Like what does what is your life? What does it mean? Where's it going? And right. like why do you have it? And that that changed from oh, um an accumulation of really light skin atoms <laughs> to, you know, live my life and natural selection and doing this out of instinct and I used to be a caveman, blah 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 blah. To the Lord loves you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. And you you are here for a purpose. Purpose, right? I've woken up today because I love you. The breath in your lungs is from me, and that's 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 why. Because I love you and I want you to save me. I want you to love me back. That's the Lord's message to you. Like, just just come back. Why why are you all the way over there? Come back to me. That like repentance, that teshuva, to to turn from that past where you've strayed away from him and just come back and enjoy enjoy your life. And what is your life? Your life. That you've been given out of love and mercy and compassion from Yah, that's beautiful. And how? Um, just to touch on, if you don't mind going into it a bit, um, I I lost my mum uh, a number of years ago at a fairly young age, and I wasn't in the faith. Mm. And I remember having a conversation with Joe about this at the time uh, uh, later on, and he was like, "You know, did you ever have any animosity towards God?" And I was like, "Do you know? I never, I never questioned. It. I never had." any element of bitterness like I, it, I didn't even connect the two I just suffered the loss and the bereavement and grieved and, and mm. went about my life mm. but I never at one point had this um, animosity towards um, uh, towards uh, the father how um, if you don't mind going into it how did that impact your understanding and feeling towards like grief and loss uh, particularly of a, of a parent which is a which is a, a deep one was that something you revisited or, or or had any form of healing or is that something that you didn't really have to like conscientiously look at again or was that you just kept it moving and kept kept going forwards? I think it's a bit of both. I think when I really found the Lord, it was getting back on my feet and saying, right, we're doing this then. I guess I guess I'm walking with the Lord now. Let's get my sandals on. Um, but revisiting those moments and revisiting that time in my life, it's a weird, it's a, it's a hard one, isn't right, it? Right, right. I don't really know how to describe that. Um, I see I see beauty in it now um, because I can't talk for my mother or my siblings because um, they're very different people. They're going to approach that situation very differently. Right. But, like, I saw a lot of good 
coming from such a terrible situation. Mm. And I sort of impress that on every situation. So if I'm ever in a bad situation, it's just like, well, the Lord, the Lord made good out of that situation. Right. And there's, um, from my experience, there's a lot of trust involved because that may not necessarily be reconciled fully in your own understanding, but you have to hand that to God and say, I, whatever that was, whatever I went through, whatever decision or judgment was made on that, like, I trust you and we'll just, we'll just keep it moving. Um, so I do appreciate it's not something that maybe uh, be a definitive thing. And then also you do have that um, understanding of a propulsion towards, like how it contributed towards you and seeking out, you know what I mean, for good or bad, you know, in God's providence, in his sovereignty and his plan, it, from your personal point of view, that time in your life propelled you towards the path that you were on. And whether it's a, a form of like rebellion in terms of your attitude and speaking out against whatever it was, it still propelled you to, to that place of, um, um, uh, yeah, acceptance. You know, when we learn about the Israel coming out of Egypt and they have to spend, they have to essentially be scorched by the desert and they, they have to have Egypt burnt out of them. Right and starved out of them, and you know they have to walk fully away from Egypt, and they have to allow Egypt to walk away from them, which may be a painful process in order to fully become Israel. Me being raised in Catholicism and then having that moment happen to me, it led to such a wilderness in my life. Right, it led to such like the first time I ever smoked a joint, I was ten years old. Wow. Yeah, like I was, and then I was like a casual drinker by eleven. And then um, that makes my mum sound really bad, but that, no, was, no, that yeah. was that was unbeknownst there. If she hears this, she's going to be mortified. But <laughs> <laughs> shout out, <Whoops. my> mum! <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> but yeah, like it was, it was such a it was a wilderness, truly. And it sounds like, oh well, how can, how can that turn into good? Like that's just going to become habits further down in life. But I think it's the Lord's intention there to burn certain things out of me to truly make me experience the world for what it is and like the, the horror of, of where it can lead at such a young age. Yeah, no doubt, bro. When you know about the, the, the uh, relationship between like traumas and difficulties and then like habitual sin, whether you know that's a sin or not, like you, you're just doing what you're doing to find comfort and peace, your peer group's doing it or whatever. And then before you know it, that's, that's just your thing. And um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's just that natural reaction to either rejection, being lost, uh, being hurt, and then you, you're doing stuff that you, you, that just comes your way. So it's like, yeah. And then that's even further for you to like, like you so rightly described, um, having that take out of, uh, come out of you when you come to the faith. Um, but again, I, I've said the word already, like fast tracked. It's like, there's there's been a speeding up like that phase that you're describing there that can be like 20 years to to some people i mean it was for me that's that's 20 years of my life in that modality of like yeah so praise god that <laughs> you got yeah. to that point where your bro's <laughs> just like the ruach hakadesh man <laughs> yeah. and you're just like what so yeah. like praise really? praise god for that like that's incredible yeah. um what was that like for the people around you at the time? I mean, I'm guessing, like, in the time that I've known you, that you've generally been quite a bright and well-spoken, polite young man. Was there, like, a... Because a, 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 you'll speak to a lot of people on this Torah path, and they were like, people were just like, what is going on with that guy? Was there a... Could you see, like, a tangible difference between, like, those people around you? Did your friendship group change like how was that for you was there a transition as you came onto the path or was it like a bit more seamless yeah um the negative side of coming onto the path is very it's a, it's a recent thing for me like it happened a lot more recently right the the positive was instant like it happened like that um i remember before like in the in that wilderness that i spoke about of like age 10 <laughs> to uh, age 10 to 12 uh, sounds ridiculous saying that, but age 10 to 12, a lot of friction with a lot of people, a lot of conflict and a lot of, who is this kid, man, just, shh, shh. you know, I was a very, I was a loud mouth. I'd say a lot of ridiculous stuff. Um, 
some of the closest friends I have right now don't have fond memories of me. Um, they, yeah, they just disliked me. Uh, and those people now are almost like family. Right. And uh, coming onto the coming onto the path phew, just changed me completely. I, I can actually hold the conversation with someone. <laughs> right. Yeah, I can actually look someone in the eyes without feeling some kind of shame. Right. About you know what I've done so far today. You know, I I used to go home scared about what would happen. Like I was worried, like oh, global warming's gonna get me. Like, <laughs> it's the monster under the bed. <laughs> like, oh, the elites. And then now it's like. I know a lot more about the world. I know how much worse it can get, but I'm, I'm just comforted. There's a warmth when I go to sleep, like the Lord's got me. If if I don't wake up in the morning, he had no more plans for me. If I do, hallelujah, there's still a purpose for me in this life. Um, but yeah, it brings back to that, that comfort and that beauty in every situation. And when I talk to people now, it's not like, you would think with the zeal of, of being a Torah keeper, as well as the intensity of who I used to be. Right. When those two mix, it wouldn't, it, it'd make more conflict. Not really, not really whatsoever. Like if, if cause it, <laughs> coming on the Torah, it sounds weird. It mellowed me out. Right. Usually people get more intense, but it definitely mellowed me out to the point where I was just like, nah, I'm, I'm not going to engage with you right now. I don't, I'm going to hold my peace. I'm going to keep my shalom. Um, if, if you want to have an adult conversation, <laughs> you can have an adult conversation. It used to be a point where I was like, I want to be right. But now I'm like, well, the Lord doesn't want you to be right. The Lord wants your soul. You know, I, I'm not, you're not here to win arguments. You're here to win souls. So it's like, I think a lot of people struggle with that, especially when you're on the Torah, where it's like, no, nah, you're wrong. But you've just got to be like, nah. I've literally got goosebumps. Like, bro, this this is why I love you. Like, seriously, <laughs> it's, it's too, ridiculous. <laughs> like, honestly, the, the conclusions and lessons and the wisdom that, like, you're experiencing. I'm not blowing smoke up your backside, bro. It's, like, it's so good to see, like, these things take years for a lot of people to come. Like, what you said there about the difference between winning souls and being right is, like, again, you a lot of us typically come onto this and they're like, oh, you can't do the pagan stuff, and you're just hammering people, mach spiritually machine gunning them. Mm. And uh, you've you've come to a very like pertinent understanding of um, what it means to like walk this out in peace and love and uh, and and what zealousness truly is is like a, a resolve that you know and then transmits around you. So I think that's incredible. And, and part of why I thought it was important to have this conversation is that like I want to be able to share to people who are in this branch of the faith to go this is why we're doing what we're doing because when you guys pick this up by the spirit of God, like it's game over, it's game over. Like, and it's, it's just, it's encouraging for myself. It's encouraging for us like to see this taking place because not only are we um, going through these peaks and troughs ourselves, but to, to see this being like uh, transmitted to, to you guys, like honestly, bro, it's, 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 an encouragement to say the least and um yeah bro like it's so yeah. good i mean don't get me wrong though i think what what a lot of people have to learn especially in almond house is every like every commendable thing i have mm -hmm. my personality on it it means i've made that mistake before okay like it like anything you could give me credit for and in any any virtue i have just know at some point I was the complete opposite and at some point I've made that mistake. Like just then when I was saying, oh, it, it, you know, you right. souls, not arguments. Right. I was that person. I've seen, and it it, it brought me convict. Like, I was convicted because I'd see c close friends who had just been, you know, beaten to a pulp verbally in a debate right. because they're wrong and just being like, yeah, I guess you're right. Instead of them going, oh yeah, I guess the Lord is great. I guess the Lord can save my life as well. Yeah, I'm right. I've won the argument, but uh oh, right, they're farther away now, bro. That cuts deep. That cuts so deep. I, I, I'm sure I could speak for other people as well. When you're in that um, initial phase and you, you're just cutting people down, like I, you know, I have, and I, I think in that period, I thought, you know, like yourself, you, you're doing what, what's right, and mm. and you're being, you're speaking in truth, and you, you're really pushing people away, and um, it. it it can be like a sad time when you look back and go, I really would have like done this a bit differently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, praise you are that like he's correcting, he's course correcting you like pretty swiftly. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
you mentioned there about some of the more negative elements like that you've experienced recently because again part of this is like what I think is a good opportunity to do is to look at the challenges for people your age um I'm saying that like you're a different species or something <laughs> like people you're, you, you but like in terms of um where your generation's at what the modern world is like things that are going on in in schooling yeah. and institutions like it's the the uh the goalposts have moved a little bit so i, I just wanted to get your insight into what the challenges have been because like you said it, it can be like oh amazing i found this path and you know i've got the yeah. sabbaths and what are some of the like harder elements have you found well like first off school is the front lines like that's it's it's <laughs> It's serious walking down the corridors and the pride flags on the wall. Yeah, you know it. You know you're on the front lines. Um, mainly the what encapsulates it is unleavened bread. Last year, um, I was out at I think City Buffet, I think it's called, or Bomb Pan in, in Liverpool, and um, by Central Station, and I'm eating with a few friends, my best friend's brother and my best friend. And they're all getting cake, and obviously, in eleven bread, you can't have can't have eleven, can't have yeast. So someone goes, "Oh, Jay, finish that! I know you want it." And I'm like, "Nah, I can't have it." They go, "What? <laughs> you you're declining food?" <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, I'm declining food. Can't have that particular piece of food. It has yeast in it." Oh, you allergic to yeast? No, for this season in my life, for unleavened bread, I can't partake in yeast because you know, scripturally speaking, that's the feast I'm you know called to partake in. They're like, you're weird. And mm. quote, unquote, you're weird. They looked at me with disgust. It was such a weird experience. I was like, oh, like pe wow. people at church, they're not lying. Like, this is a real visceral experience for some people in the world. Like, you're weird though. Um the more nuanced struggles though is definitely in school where you have because I'm a teenager, um you're gonna have the same temptations as other teenagers. You're gonna have the same attractions to certain activities oh let's go out and do this stupidness or even though i'm a you know a changed person delivered hallelujah there's still those lingering feelings to certain activities where it's like i could do that and get away with it or right there's that you know th there's always that temptation of just taking advantage of your grace like oh I don't, you know i've heard people say oh, i don't worry jay the lord will forgive you like no that's not the point if i know it's something i'm gonna have to repent of i shouldn't be doing it right and it, in school it's all time there's always y you'll you'll find such things that you'll say that you wouldn't say in any other environment because school you especially when you're a, like a male when you're a, when you're a young man and you're you know chilling with your friends you'll say some stuff and you're like Whoa. right <laughs> I'm, you're a different person when you go into school any any parents out there who have children just know your child is on the front lines like it's not it's not a joke whatsoever and they definitely need your prayer. I know I need prayer for it. Um, it's, I'm not perfect. I know I'm I'm, I'm big though, but it's like this. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. It's it's definitely it's it's definitely a hard thing to deal with. Um, I think the worst part is having knowledge that you having knowledge about something, but still having the temptation to partake in it. Right. Having the knowledge that this could lead to my eternal destruction, and there's still some part of you that goes, "I want to do that," which you need. There's there's that that constant battle when you're walking through life. I think adults definitely deal with it, but in school or even in, you know, outside of school, especially when you're my age, it's everywhere. Right. Yeah. I mean, irrespective of age, like you, where the spirit's strong, the flesh is weak. Mm. Um, and adult, teenager, irrespective, bro, it's like that's, that's, that's going to take place. Um, also, like scripturally speaking, it's like, you know, bad company corrupts, etc. Like, so for example, even like I could be in a certain situation or scenario, whether it's I'm with a, a group of people and I could potentially let my guard down or start speaking in a way that mm. isn't appropriate. Um, how, um, we, we said before we actually come on the show, we were talking about like your peer group and, and how you, you like school in a co in the sense that you've got your friends with you, mm. and 
obviously I would imagine not all your friends are believers, right? Yeah. So wh- where do you think that comes from in terms of like um, that almost like falling back into type? Do you think that's peer pressure? Is that like just general generally because you're 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 around the lads and then like that's just how they are, so you fall into it? Um, what what do you think that is? I they're not like that either. Here's the problem because we all sort of fall back into a like a frequency, you know, like we'll, like individ as individuals we're all very different, but we will all as a collective fall back into a mode of thinking. Um, if there is like I'm I'm still me, like if there is something that will like if one of them have said something inappropriate or I, I've said something that is blasphemes the Lord. You know, that's like whoa! Right. It's something that's addressed instantly. Um, I'm not necessarily around people that would do that, but it, it has it has happened. Um, how schools help me in that uh, in that sense, though, I don't regret going to school. Like I actually think it's it's positive for me as a believer, like spiritually speaking, because I feel like I can talk to anyone, right, in any environment. I can talk to a Gentile in their language. And I'm around a lot of Muslims. I, I've got an apologetic for them as well. I'm around them all the time. Mm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm around people of you know who are deep in sin. People who are fornicators. I'm friends with a lot of fornicators. Like they're, they're as a teenager, they're everywhere as well. Right. And, you know, I'm. I've had dialogues with almost every type of person at a very young age, and I think that's definitely prepared me for the life to come when I leave school. Um, but when it comes to like falling back into into like old ways and stuff i think you're very susceptible susceptible to it right when in, in school definitely um but but like i said i think everyone's susceptible to it i think we're not the we're not the only people no definitely not bro and um i think you're only as good as the the company you keep and that's why it's like it you know even coming to shabbat is like we'll we'll keep checking you on that Mm. And I think praise God. I mean, it's always the spirit. Like praise God for the spirit because it isn't necessarily a case of like, look at me being the super righteous one and I'm getting all this Torah stuff right. Yeah. So like, there's no friction with the spirit. It's just like gravy. But then, when things aren't on point, <clears throat> praise God that His spirit's there to be like Jacob. Like, come on now. Yeah. You know better. Yeah. And it's like, well, that's the spirit's still working in me because He's checking me. But I think, again, part of this, um, I guess, the proving ground of school and many social environments is, like, that's where the rubber meets the road. It's, like, I'm I'm literally, like, you know, the way I, I always think about this is, like, when Abraham went in, into Sodom and Gomorrah to rescue Lot, he would have been surrounded by all sorts of stuff. It's not like everyone just, like, shrunk back to the sides and he was able just to pick his mate up. It's, like, he was going into the into the but he was a righteous man and kept his integrity and i think part of that proving ground like whether it's school whether it's football teams whether it's work environments there's always that challenge for believers where it's like i'm being pulled into the mire and like ya is training me in mm. terms of like how quick can my recoil be to the point where it's like now nah, do you know what i'm not having that or i'm not listening to this or i'm going to walk away here like I don't think it stops, bro. And uh, again, it doesn't surprise me that you find yourself in these situations where, um, yeah, you're just like, oh, I don't know if I feel comfortable about, like, yeah. and if it's any consolation, like, and I, I, it's not like I've been on this for like, a lot, like six years. I've, I've, I've violated Sabbaths. I've fornic- I've, I've done everything wrong. Mm. Even after, like, knowing like yeah 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 i'm there i'm there there." and then it's like but i look back and i go gosh i violate oh like but then you you, the righteous man falls down seven times and carries on and all that so like i think it again it's part of your fast track where it's like you're in this very difficult situation but um you mentioned there as well um i'll get off my soapbox um about being able to like witness to other people like has that been something that you're like you enjoy and is that you? You mentioned at the top about purpose. Mm. Like, is that? Do you find that a, a comfortable area of your purpose? Knowing that you're right, I may be in the front lines. I may be having to put up with all this stuff, but I know that I'm having like conversations that need to be had. Definitely, I think 
the way I describe school is the front lines. I often feel like I'm a military medic, like just with, you know, I, I can heal you, I'm right here. But it's, it's not one of those where I can, I'm not necessarily a witness where I'll go up to someone and say, listen, this is the medication, take it right now. Um, I've definitely been a person where I've been known for, if you if you come to me about a spiritual question, I'll answer it for you. Right. I'm, you know, I'll, I'll give you that answer. Um, obviously, I'm still learning. I don't have all the answers anyway, but I'll I'll definitely come for you, um, spiritually speaking, with what with what I know, with what I've learned. Thanks to this place, thanks to Almond House. Um, I've seen so many people. I say so many. It's like few, but in like relative to my environment, right? So many people like become more and more receptive, just and ask more and more questions, like simply because of. I'm trying to stay humble, um, but simply because of my presence in their life, I think that's that's all glory to the Lord. Because I definitely like my my brother was that person for me, mm. and you know a, a lot of this place and, and a lot of people around him. I, I don't know for him personally, but they were they were that person. For everyone has that one person where they go. This person, the right. Lord worked through them <clears throat> in order to you know you know give me certain answers until I was spiritually mature enough to look for those answers myself. Right. And I've got two main friends that I, I chill with. I, like, I, I say I've got a lot of friends, but I'm, I'm civil with everyone. I think the Lord's definitely given me that skill to talk to anyone. Like I said before, I can talk any language. Just English. But, <laughs> <laughs> sure. but I, can talk, I can talk to anyone. Um, and, you know, my two main friends, I've definitely witnessed to them the most. I've definitely scared them a few times. Right, yeah. I've definitely comforted them a few times, made them laugh a few times. But... You know, I say me, but that that's the Lord's way. And that's right. that's the Lord, you know, thankfully working through me. I'm I'm just grateful to have a purpose in his kingdom. Um my friend just recently, um, you know, it's his testimony to give, so I won't give so many details, but he was deep in like deeper than I was into, you know, into the world. And one day we we just we just chit chat and just talking. And before I know it, he's just telling me how much he loves the Lord, how much he loves Jesus. And he's telling me, oh, I wish church was open every day because I just want to go. I want to be there right now. And I'm like, what? And he's like, oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. And he's asking me so many questions. And he's looking for me for the same approval that I was looking for my mm. looking to my brother in. And I was like, no way. Mm. Like, if, if you knew who this person was, if he sees us, he's going to know who he is. I'm definitely, I'm, I'm very proud of him. But he's, he's just done a whole 180. And I'm just praying for him every day. I prayed for both of my, my closest friends. And I've seen so much deliverance in their lives. I've seen Praise the spirit God. move in their lives. And it's weird. My, like, my life is a movie. I, I, <laughs> only, <laughs> only last week, um, a Muslim girl came to me asking for a Bible. I was like, excuse me? She was just like, yeah, I'm like 85% there. I was like, what do you mean 85% there? She's come to the Lord as well. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, bro, so as much as I, I've, you know, sort of insulted school, it is a, it's wildlife. It's the wilderness. You see a lot of mad stuff, and being in proximity, to those people, the spirit has you know the sp the spirit within me has definitely you know it's 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 in a positive way infected them. You know it's 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 spread throughout my environment, um, and it, all it takes is that one person, that one little, that, that tiniest spark. Like uh, even in, in, when I was oh, when I was so much younger, um, I think in year seven. Um, there was like the kid who sat next to me really got on my nerves because he was he moved in the spirit. Um, he was that like oh no you're wrong like <laughs> he he was he was a lot like that as well you're wrong but he he came about it in a in a comfortable way and um, I always had friction with that person and I I always regret it because like him the, him him then and me now we're, we're pretty much the same person right we'd we'd get along he was not necessarily in Torah but. He had a spiritual maturity to him, and I think that that's what school needs. That's what everyone, regardless of if you're in school or not, you need a person in your life, or you need to become a person in somebody else's life where you're spiritual, spiritually mature enough for them to come to you and ask questions. Because the Lord doesn't like like we spoke about before. The Lord doesn't want you throwing the word down people's throats. He doesn't want you, you know, bashing people over the heads with "I'm right." You need He as a comforter. You need people to go to and say, yeah, like, yeah, this is, this is the Lord. This is the comfort I'm looking for. Yeah, a city on the hill that uh, can't be hidden. Um, what I <laughs> just to I love the fact that you refer to year seven because, like, 
for any Americans, they're just going to be like, I don't know. But <laughs> have grade, that because any time they refer to like ninth grade, fifth <laughs> grade, I'm like, I've got no understanding of where that is. Like yeah. I have to get Google out to where, when is ninth grade. Um, but no, what's really cool, um, is what you're saying there for me is like, um, I think there can be a temptation of being dismissive towards like younger people and teenagers about grasping uh, things of faith or like to assume that they're not really you know it's all fortnight and 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 whatever it is you know what I mean and, and it's not like it really isn't like we can often equate um you know uh pe- speak having those like conversations with people like oh, I'm finding this challenging in the workplace or I've got this colleague who I've been witnessing to to another time to to hear it in that context of, of being in school um, is a beautiful thing and I, I think we all obviously know the current situation with regards to how the dynamic within these institutions have really shifted um, and you've got um, pressures on 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 uh, not just younger people but people in general whether it's uh, medication drugs um, social media body image all these things that are just bombarding um, humanity right now um, it's that uh, it's that generation that really do need like people like yourself who are just like they're there flagging the ground just like you know I'm 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 the Jesus guy and <laughs> and like that's where yeah. you're gonna go like <laughs> if you've got and that, and that's 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 what it's all about like your signposting and whether it's like a full out witness of like right you you come into you come into the faith or whether it's planting seeds and just like just showing fruit bro just bearing fruit in your environment that's like predominantly really dark really desperate and um for those that don't know we're based very well we're in basically in liverpool it's a dark city it's a heavy heavy place this the northwest of england is a it's a heavy environment bro and you know to be in this area uh and and doing what you're doing like it's uh it's definitely a work of yard. With that being said, um, we, we spoke about, um, you know, your fondness for the tour portions and recollecting about your first ones. Uh, one thing that, like, I've, I, I'm always curious to ask um, when people are coming to the fellowship over a period of time, it, it can be weeks, even months, before I have, like, a full conversation about, like, how they've, you know, I'll be sitting there in Shabbat and Joe, Tommy and Jackie will be going deep, in the word like deep we're not we're not talking about breadcrumbs we're talking like the meaty meaty Mm. chunks right Mm. and i'm looking around going what are they thinking or like it could be like a first time visitor who's who's barely in the faith it could be somebody who's new to the torah and i'm 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 constantly just like i wonder what like what's being uh if they're offended here or if they're grasping this like and for me, it's always interesting to finally sit down with, with, with people and go, so how do you find the teachings like? Because this is some heavy, mm. heavy hitting stuff. How was that for you? And how has that progressed in terms of, like you said, you once you come, you are here every week. And we know that uh, Josh has been on his travels because you would come initially with your brother. And then your bro went uh, uh, went abroad. And I was kind of thinking, oh, I really hope Jacob like carries on coming because like, there's something going on here and um you still kept coming and i was like right this is this is i think this is legit <laughs> how was that like for you like coming in with the, just the teaching side of stuff and 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 being under that like tuition and how you grasped it was that mm. i mean i presume it must have been the spirit because like without it that it may be like quite heavy now what what's what's that been like for you the first one i ever came to it wasn't necessarily me comprehending it spiritually. It was just like, long story short, I had found it. Like I was looking for something. I had, I, I was scared of something. I was wary of something. I was, I was like, what does this mean? Like I, I had a constant question in my head, like why, who, where? Um, I was, I, it's truth. I was truth seeking. Like a lot of people in the Torah portion I found, I was going down rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole. And it was just every time I went down one, it was just dread and fear and uncomfort. And we talking like conspiracy based yeah, stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I, I come, I, I came here, and like I was like, finally, like I was, I was at home. I remember, I remember so vividly opening up the opening up the door, 
And the first words I hear is Joe saying, this is my home. And I get a hug. And then it's just, I remember the, the carpet as well. This is before the renovation. Right, so yeah, yeah. My, my socks are off and... Jason, <laughs> <laughs> take your shoes off. Oh yeah, my shoes are off. Sorry, yeah, my socks. Yeah. Man. Man, my, sh- my shoes are off, and I'm just really comfy. And you know, I'm on that little bench, and my brother's like, "Oh, you, you've got to pivot to stay comfy." And I'm like, "Oh, okay, okay." <laughs> so I'm getting, I'm getting comfortable, and go down this. Whew, it's just a tall portion of no arc. It's like, bang. and it was just like, "Oh, this is this is it." Like, like finally, it was the one after. I forget the name of it. Um, Someone, someone's going to be out there to correct me. But um, yeah, that then that's when I started to, to like tune in, you know, like uh, uh, change my frequency to actually apply to the Torah portion and truly turn on my spirit and, and, and comprehend what was going on. It was, it was after my first, my first encounter. Um, my encounter with the spirit was actually in the music. And I think right. that's a big part of Almond House. It's a big yeah. part of any ministry, the music. The first song that it, like, bro, picture this, yeah, bro. <laughs> so we've just done the tour portion, and my mind's blown. Just had this nice meal. Everyone's hugging me. Like I don't. I, at this point, I didn't get hugs. I hadn't had a hug in like a year. I'm getting, I'm getting hugs from everyone. Everyone's like, oh yeah. Everyone's so happy. It's like a cozy little room. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm enjoying myself. And then all you hear is cuddle. Uh, and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Everyone in unison, bro. There's like, a, it's like a, a dim. It's like the, the lights are dim, and it's just the lyrics on the screen. And I'm just there, like, whoa. My eyes get heavy, and I get all warm. And I'm like, that was my first encounter with the spirit. And I was like, whoa. I didn't know what to do. I was like, yo, come on back next week, bro. <laughs> I love that. I love it was, that. It was incredible. Um, yeah, it's always um. It's always good to hear, like, I, I love hearing people's first impressions and uh, it kind of rekindles, like, the memories of what it is like to, to, to come through the doors the first time. And I, I think um, I think maybe in your position, like, because you're still at school and you're still, like, academically minded in terms of, like, right, I'm going in, I'm learning, I'm taking on information. Like, maybe there's that element where, like, you are just more primed to, to be able to, like, um, receive and understand information and, and digest it in a way that's um, uh, really healthy and probably like pretty efficient as well. Mm. Whereas um, for some people, it, it, it may not come as easy. Um, how uh, how how important do you find? Like you said at the top about Shabbats and resting, particularly in the context of like being at school and the pressures, like. What does it mean to you now, like, in terms of um, how it contributes to your life and, and how you see things, like, moving forward for yourself? Mm. Like, I'm thinking al- along, the li- along the lines of, like, the covenantal commitment that's involved in this. Is, is this, you know that, like, this is, a, like, a long-term thing? Like, mm. is this something that you could see yourself, like, well, maybe I'll do this for a bit, or like, how do you see this this element of like uh, uh, serving a, a covenantal God? Yeah, um, where that comes to mind is definitely generational. Um, I couldn't imagine my kids going without this blessing. Me going without this blessing for a week is like a trial. Like it's, right. I'm, I think I've missed a few, and the weeks after that missing one has just been, it's just. It's definitely like a, a recharge, um, as well with the with this whole fast track we're talking about, it, the the trials get fast tracked as well, right? And I think that need for a pit stop, that need for a rest, that it, it becomes more not like just a less, rhythm, isn't it? Yeah, but it becomes more vital, like it's almost like like spiritual life or death. Like, listen, we're at, we're, right. we're at war, and you need to, right. you need to get back to camp every now and again, don't you? So right. It's it's that de- it yeah it's intense, definitely. When you, you spoke there about um, this generational element of the faith and like mm. understanding the principles of um, what it means to be like uh, walking in this and then uh, raising others in a way potentially, um, p- 
part of uh, what I find fascinating in terms of like the ministry itself and maybe not just the Almond House exclusively, but within this messianic walk where we've got a lot of guys, uh, particularly um, young men who are maybe perhaps coming away from um, like experiencing like we have like fatherless environments, um, difficult um, upbringings. And we're all kind of learning what it means to be on this path and, and what it means to be men, right? And I, I see this importance in terms of like the example that myself and other people set can be um, uh, really important in terms of how younger people see it. Short, the short, the short of it is, what what do you what do you think you need in terms not need but how, what supports you or encourages you when you look at those men around you um what are you hoping to see in order to like receive support encouragement and an example like what can we i know it sounds a bit like but what can we do for you in order and i'm speaking to, like generally mm. like what do you expect because i'd ex- i'd expect to look up and I need to respect and see an example of what it is I'm to emulate, much like you were saying with your brother. How, what do you need in terms of like support? And what do you expect to see from those in eldership and in, in, in leadership, do you think? Yeah, I think that's definitely that respect. It's very, it's very important for me to, because like there's always been, oh, respect your elders, but then I, I became very defiant in that. Right. Nah, el- like regardless, I need to earn the elder's respect, and the elder needs to earn mine. Um, but y- y- here it's like the best way I can describe it is like a brotherhood, right? And within a within a brotherhood, although there is like you know you know you've got the elders and you've got the, you know the younger at the bottom. Like I, I find myself a lot of times not wanting to speak, and wanting to just listening to like two elders have a conversation. I think it was it was you and you and Jackie at some point. You were just having a conversation. And I was just there, like, right, just just observing. And I think that, like you said, that academic aspect of my brain of of me wanting to learn, and and having older brothers around me who I want to emulate and who I want to sort of learn from. In you know, in oh, I don't know how to phrase it, but just people I want to learn from and people I want to eventually surpass or become. Right. Because I've never really had, I think I've in every environment I've ever been in, I've looked for some kind of father figure. In school, I've looked for, you know, big like male teachers who can command the corridor and who have my respect and mm. have a laugh every now and again. Mm. And, you know, at the, the you know, family conventions, I always sit with my grandfather and, you know, ah, sure, you know, mm. you know always, I always look for some kind of brotherhood. Um, my friends are a lot like me. They're a lot, you know, that, that, that's a brotherhood again in, in church. I make friends very quickly, especially with, you know, my older brothers. And that that's what I'm looking for. That's what I yearned for for so long. Just a, a collection of brothers who have made the mistakes I've made and who can impart wisdom in which I can, you know, take upon myself. I think that's what I want to become for other people. I want to become uh, a place where they can go for wisdom. Like I said before, right. every bit of wisdom I have is from a mistake I've made. And that's why I, imp- I want to impart on, you know, my nephews, on, you know, my, my cousins, my, you know, my, my son, you know, my, my other little brothers in the faith. Um, yeah, because I am ultimately a little brother. I'm the youngest in, in the room, in, in every Shabbat. Well, I, I, apart from like the, you know, the, the babies running around. And right. that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like that, like definitely that's, that, that's what I've yearned for for so long. And that's what I look for in, in the leaders of, of the of the of the ministry yeah and, and it's a beautiful blend in it because like we all get to partake in that like you know we're, we're all we're told to have uh, a teachable spirit isn't it so to always remain humble and meek as possible because we're always learning and is that um yeah like a ripple effect of everybody's either looking up or around to to have that same experience of um either being inspired or, or having a reference point to like what it means to be like a godly godly man so it's it's cool and it's reciprocated in the same sense as well because like like wisdom will it will it will like filtrate through any means and for any like uh for any person at any time and mm. that's cut 
part of the cool element of being in the fellowship is like there being such a wide range of people and ages and backgrounds that like it always comes through no matter no matter what um so last year was like your first how long have you been coming now like a year and a year and some change year and a bit right so to talk to me about like the Moadim in particular so like what was that like for you i mean i'm thinking about Sukkot in particular mm. um and any memories of the other like because like we can all get it we can all get it twisted about like christmas and easter and all that and that's fine but like to actually taste the fruit of what this messianic walk is about in particular with regards to the moedim what was your first year like and talk me through some of your experiences like with Sukkot and whatnot i have never felt that much joy doing i've never felt that much joy partaking in any holiday like in my life um easter christmas <laughs> valentine's day like it and you can think of um it it is dwarfed by the Moadim, definitely um am i right in thinking you nearly didn't make it to Sukkot? yeah oh my that's a that's a whole story you want me to get into that yeah go on go on okay so um like you say i'm, I'm deep into year 11 at this point um and Sukkot fell on the second month of 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 year 11 september then october and then so this is the first year uh when you start your gcse's yeah, right? yeah so yeah. you main it for any americans out there that's like the main, the big dog exams when you're 16 so this is start of the year yeah 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 and every single teacher is like you cannot miss a single lesson if you miss a single lesson you're gonna fail or uh, i had a specifically it was a coursework subject i media it was like uh, miss if i just like took five days off school what, what would happen she was just like you'd fail definitely and i'm like damn like, what am what am i gonna do and then sukkot fell on my birthday as well i was turning 16 on on the 3rd of october on oh, of, yeah, that, of yeah. that year yeah so i was like ah so th that's where like the inner egypt in me kicked in i was like <laughs> nah because earlier that year earlier that year my two closest friends had, had turned fi uh, ten, yeah had turned 15 so I was like, oh, like they they had like a, you get me a little a little boys' night. I want one as well. Like what what what's going on here? I don't want to be in New Yorkshire on my birthday, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, ah, sack this. I'm not I'm not going. I'm not going. My brother's like, listen, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but it'd be a blessing for everyone if you came. And I was like, no, no, enjoy yourself. You went last year without me. You can go last year, this year without me. So I'm praying about it. And I'm like, Lord, like g give me some guidance on this. You, I'll let you decide. So, as you do, I go to sleep. Of course, I have a dream, don't I? <laughs> and, uh, of course. <laughs> and, uh, and literally, in the dream, we're in in Joe's living room. And um, and Becca's like, oh, are you excited to come to Sukkot? And I'm like, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm, 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 I'm down. I'm, you know I mean? I've got, got my bags packed in the dream. It's broad daylight. It's sunny. It's beautiful. And we, we no one gets a car. We all pilgrim. Like, we all fully walk there. Everyone's got big sticks, and uh, and we get there, and it's it's beautiful. It's just warm, just warmth. That's all I can describe it. Like imagine how daylight would feel, mm. like as a concept. It's just beautiful. And I was on a Wednesday, and I wake up, and I'm like, oh, okay. It's probably just because it's summer, and you know everyone's telling me about cigar, whatever. On Thursday night, I have another dream, and it's still it's still fun, but it's an uncomfortable kind of fun. I'm I'm at a rave, and it's raining and it's nighttime, it's mm. cold. Everyone's like you know bumper to bumper. It's like ah, yeah, you enjoying the music, and my friends are there, like the people I'm in my head planning on spending my birthday with. I'm like oh yeah yeah this I'm, I'm loving it, but there's there's like that inner inkling of like I shouldn't be here. I should be somewhere else. Like this isn't for me. Like this, they're, they're not speaking my language. This isn't my country. Like something's off. And I wake up and I just feel like, Ugh. like nah. How? Which dream would I want to go back to? Mm. Like the dream where I've got a drink in my hand and I'm in a rave and it's raining and it's it's wet and it's like, you know, I'm stood on muddy grass or the dream where I'm with my spiritual family and it's warm and it's it's just lovely in, in every way conceivable and it's like. <laughs> so that evening I went. Yo, bro. <laughs> my brother's like, yo, shalom. 
<laughs> and I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm back. <laughs> and he's like, I'll get you back. <laughs> crazy experience and i don't regret it whatsoever that was one of my best birthdays i had <laughs> with it with a huge tray bacon yeah 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 <laughs> the yeah. cards i've never felt that much love it was it was it was a blessing it truly was um sakat was like a graduation like it was right yeah, yeah yeah i'd been so worried about my actual like worldly tuition and worldly graduation that i had forgotten my spiritual graduation wow. and my spiritual tuition and that was definitely reinforced in Sakar. I'd, I'd, yeah. Now, at the start of the year, when Becker again asked, like, you ready for God? I went, yeah, I'm ready yeah, for Sakar. Yeah. Of course I am. So you'd had the full, that year you'd had the full site. You started it pretty much, at, well, you started at Bereshit mm -hmm. and then went straight through to Sakai. Yeah. No wonder it felt like a graduation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, Bereshit was the only one I missed. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that year I didn't miss a sink. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did the entire tour cycle except Bereshit. That's, I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Um, what what make? Because like I love I love Sukkot, bro. Like mm. I think it's the culmination of a lot of um, a lot of different things, but uh, particularly when it comes to like in the context of a of a, of a year of doing the Torah. You've got all the trials, all the tests, and there's such, um, such relief and, and beauty in the Moedim and and, and and the holidays because they're almost like signposts and, and targets to get to. Like, mm. like you say, when you when you're behind enemy lines for for most of the time, mm. whether it's externally out like in the world or internally in in the battlefield of your mind, when you get to the Moed, it's just like, it's just so good. Um, just talk. Just talk to me a bit more about Soko. Basically, what that means to you in terms of like being amongst the brethren, being being with the family. Like, how how important do you think that is within the faith? I think everyone should definitely experience it. If you if you're not gonna do it regularly, at least do it once. Right. Like it's it's a life changing experience because it's just it's just like stepping back from the world completely. Like you can have. You can have Shabbat every week, but imagine that for like a a whole week. Right, <laughs> like that's what that's how my brother described it. I think we were, we were laughing and joking with someone, and he was like, "Bro, obviously I had food in my hand, of course." <laughs> He's like, "Of course," <laughs> and he goes, um, "Imagine this, but for a whole ten days." And I was like, well, yeah. "This is when I was still questioning it. This is before yeah. the dreams, and then actually partaking in the feast, like every day. Woke up and it was." It it was it reminded me of a time in my life right after my baptism. So right after my baptism, right, yeah, it's like temptation didn't exist and the spirit was everywhere and it was like, whoa, what is this? Like this this, this is this is why I need to get to. And obviously, after like trials and trials, that you know that deteriorated and you know unfortunately that I wasn't in that I wasn't in that place in my life, and then Sukkot so happened. And it was just every day. Ignited, yeah. Yeah, and it was just like, whoa. It was just, it was, it was cool. It was like, the baptism was fire. It was like fiery. But Sukkot was like a cool, like, like beach almost. It was, right, it yeah. Was like, yeah. It was like bathing in the spirit. Wow, yeah, I love that. Yeah, it was, it, it meant for, mm, that's, that's the thing though. It meant for trials after. Yeah. Like no, that that's guaranteed, bro. It's like yeah. the 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 element of Sukkot is like I think Sonia put it really brilliantly one year when we were having a midrash and she was like, like as cool as good as Sukkot is in terms of like the celebration and what it represents, it's like we can't forget that this is like training and we're going back out in the yeah. field like afterwards, yeah. whether it's like like I said, in your own life and your own battles or whether it's something that's that's taking place externally, it, it's absolutely vital. Um, I just wanted to touch on and ask you about like, you know, we've spoken about your brother a, a number of times and like, um, I, I love him to bits, like his character, what he brings to the fold and um, just being in his company is um, is a blessing. Uh, what, what does that mean to you to be doing this with your brother? Like to have that affinity with him because you could well easily obviously like be a on completely different paths uh, but be like see the faith in a different way like is that something you're aware of or, or considerate of or grateful for like how do you see that in terms of like how that helps you like 
whether you check each other, whether you encourage each other, what does that look like for you? Um, if if you have a family member in in on the walk with you, you'll definitely understand like being at a dinner table with other family members who aren't on the walk and you you feel out of place with your with your family member who is. Like right. me and my me and my brother will be at like I don't know, we'll we'll just be at the dinner table with the whole family, let's say. And it will just be like we'll side eye each other, like nah. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> you know, like or they, they'll have like a, a normal conversation that all families do, and then we just we'll just be out of sync. Like we'll we'll code switch and we'll speak their language, but it's, right. it's like we're putting on an accent yeah. almost. Like me and my brother, like after work, say if I finish late, and I, I used to go back to his, and it'd just be we'd have hour long conversations, and we'd be barely laughing. Like the, we we speak each other's language, and I think you definitely need someone if not a blood relative, someone who is as close as a blood relative as you can get, who's on the walk with you. Um, I think if you come on the walk, you're going to find that person anyway. Right. Because, you know, we all like spiritual siblings. But, like, definitely having my brother with me, it's, it's very edifying because we, we, we make, we trip over the same puddles. You know, we, we, we have the same hurdles and seeing my brother make the same mistakes I do and seeing him try and prevent me from making the same mistakes he does. Right. It's 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 definitely encouraging. It's definitely propelling when it comes to a good walk. Love that. Um what do you think is I don't know if you could answer this with one quintessential answer, mm. but like what do you think the most valuable thing that you've learned so far since coming to the Torah and, and, and the and the fellowship. The beauty in pain. <laughs> you put that in it. That's a bar. <laughs> I'm glad you recorded it. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to <laughs> elaborate on this one. The beauty of pain. Go the on. The beauty of pain. I think in every spiritually painful thing I've encountered, there has been a silver line into it. There has been in every sin I've committed, there's been a painful conviction. And I've rejoiced in that conviction because if, if you're convicted about something, that means the Lord's with you. Mm. If you if you do anything you want and the Lord's not you're not being convicted, mm. you're like Pharaoh. The Lord's hardened your heart there. So there's a beauty in pain, and that you know the Lord's with you. You know that you know pain is good because you know you're alive. But I think there's a beauty in trials because with a test comes a testimony, and with a testimony, you know, mm. there, there comes a witness. It comes a test, yeah, 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 yeah and. I remember the most vivid one that I tell people the most is I'll uh, I'll pull up the scripture. Yeah, yeah, by all means. It's a long story. You ready? Um, you bro, this is the, this is what we're here for. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we've got the mics. We're, we're here for the chat. So, um, so for my friend's birthday, happy birthday again, man. I go. Uh, let's get some drinks. Let's get some weed. I'm, I'm on the walk already. This is like February of. 23 mm -hmm. so i'm i'm already a few months on the walk um and i'm like yeah we'll, we'll have some fun we'll you know what i mean and i s <laughs> i smoke and what used to take me you know like six puffs to get high two puffs and i'm feeling sick and i'm like what's going on and it, it gets to a point where i'm just like Held up on my bed, and I start seeing these chariots, these chariots like come down from the sky, and you know these these like this fire everywhere, and I'm like, what's going on? And I I just I just I just ignore it, but like these these like chariots of fire are coming down from the sky, and I'm like, oh, hey hey boys boys call the ambulance, and they're like, ah shut up, what are you what are you talking about? Call the ambulance for you hitting a whitey, get drink some water. So it's like oh whatever whatever. In the march. After learning my mistake, like the the Lord don't want you in these activities. The Lord doesn't want you doing this anymore. Stop. I do it again. We're in the park with the boys. My like, oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> Biggest mistake I have, <laughs> bro. <laughs> so I, st I start panicking and the world starts shaking and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. it's happening again. I thought I was immune. So I, I so I rush home. My mom's like. You okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm going straight to bed. She knew instantly. She is <laughs> the mother's instinct. She's like, oh, okay. I get into my room. I'm like, Lord, Lord, 
forgive me, forgive me. What have I done? Forgive me, forgive me. And it was this weird, I don't know how to explain it. Imagine like sinking into darkness. Mm. And it was like the Lord's foot was like, was like here. And I was just sinking past it deeper and deeper and deeper. And I was just surrounded by the demonic. Like they were like a, a closer than me and you right now. Like they were in my face howling. They were having a great time. They were like, eyes ah, falling again. Like this fool <laughs> laughing in my face. And I, rem I remember this, this like clown almost like just like nose like right here coming towards me. And I'm like, no, no, Lord, please don't let me go. Don't let me go. Don't let me go. And I'm in the fetal position again. And I'm like, no, no. So I sit up and my whole room's blurry except for the Bible. The Bible's clear as day. So I just grab it. And at this point in my walk, I'm reading Leviticus. And I turn my page. I'm turning, turning, turning. And as I'm turning, amongst the tears, by the way, um, I think out loud in my head, none of this applies to me. You know how you open your Bible and you think there's going to be a magical verse that solves right, all yeah. your problems? I've done that. <clears throat> I, I, I opened up my bookmark and I was like, none of this applies to me. None of this applies to me. And then I get to Leviticus 26, verse 14. The punishment for disobedience. I'll just, I'll just read that out quickly. Mm, yeah. But if you will not listen to me and will not do all these commandments, if you spurn my statutes and if, you, if your soil abhors my rules so that you will not do all my commandments but break my covenant, then I will do this to you. I will visit you with panic wasting disease and fever that consume the eyes and make the heart ache and you shall sow your seed in vain for your enemy shall eat it i will see i will set my face against you and you shall be struck down before your enemies those who hate you shall rule over you and you shall flee with, with when none pursue you and in in if spite and if in spite of this you will not listen to me then i will discipline you again sevenfold for your sins and it goes on more gosh bro i am i am crying like there's this pure tears of dread and fear and i don't know what to do and you know like i said i just get back into, into bed and i'm like lord don't let me go don't let me go don't let me go and the lord does he does this weird thing with me where he would just send me to sleep like if I, if, I, if ever i'm in like a a, a situation where you know i'm spiritually in peril or you know spiritually being attacked he'll just send me to sleep and i, I woke up and i was like Whoa. <laughs> you just needed that elijah <laughs> now <laughs> yeah literally i was like fell asleep woke up and i was like "Whoa!" it was the scariest moment that it, it yeah no one will ever replicate that, that the, the fear i felt in that moment and through that mistake has been like oh you want to come for a drink no i don't smoke no more yeah I, I love that because, um, again, this isn't about blowing smoke. It's like I've seen the calling that the Lord has on your life. Um, and I'm not one for speaking, you know, prof prophecy and, and words. and all, It's not. But when I see the quality of uh, potential leadership and, like we said, the, the fast tracking um, that's taking place, like the Lord has... Um, I'm sure you're already aware of this, like a definitive calling for you and he wants you to be doing certain things. Mm. So when, you, when you're when you off-piste, he's going to bring you back like pretty sharply. So I think yeah. as you eloquently put, like the spirit is active when those moments happen and uh, course corrects you accordingly because you know, I'm sure you're aware that he chastised those, those whom he loves. Yeah. Um, so pray, praise Yah that he's uh, continuing to do that. Um, just to just to wrap up, um, I just wanted to give you the the last bit of the platform. Like, any if you could address, I, I, I'm not, and I, oh God, <laughs> but like any words of encouragement for those who, who 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 would watch this, either your age or any age, like mm. where we're at in terms of like what you've seen in the world, the context of uh, how things are, are going and um what we're all doing uh together any yeah any words of encouragement anything that w from your heart where you're just like it's all good guys yeah um 
it it can definitely it can be done. So that's that's pretty much it. It, it can be done. Uh, I think the way it says, I don't know the specific. No paraphrase, uh, man. I'm always I'm Captain Paraphrase. <laughs> on here, trust me. <laughs> the way it says, uh, don't look down on those simply because of their age. And I think if you're my age and you're on the walk, you definitely look down on yourself and you make excuses for yourself. Like, oh, I'm 16, it's okay. Or, oh, I can, it's, it's whatever, the, the Lord understands my age. And nah, you're just as capable and just as competent as your older brothers and your older sisters. And you shouldn't give yourself excuses so that you can get away with certain things. You are just as accountable as them. And if you ever feel like, oh, I can't really do that. Like, oh, I'm only, I'm only, you know, only 12 or I'm only I'm only 14 I'm only it can be done I'm only 40 <laughs> yeah <laughs> despite your age if you, if you feel like you cannot do it it can be done the Lord finds a way no matter what if you saw the pit I was in and you saw how quickly he just you know sent down a, a rope of safety and, and hoisted me out of that pit trust me and for parents there's there's a word of encouragement there if you ever feel like your child is beyond you know redemption my friends who are younger than me they've they've been delivered like that within a matter of days a matter hallelujah. Of weeks. hallelujah um I've, I've seen yeah honestly people who i i thought were irredeemable you know i've had to repent of of putting them in that bracket because the lord works and if he works you're not gonna stop him just me so yeah hallelujah jacob that was immense thank you so much um, like I speak for everybody here in the fellowship we love you we're so proud of you you're a credit to your mother you're a credit to your family uh, we love you and your brother and um, you've done nothing but bless us in your presence it's an uh, absolute joy to see the work that the Lord is doing in your life and what I've come to learn in and around your life as well um, it's a pleasure to um, consider you family um, and to do what we do week in, week out, um, it's a pleasure to be to be doing this by your side. And you continue to inspire me, you inspire other people. And uh, I hope that uh, this conversation is an inspiration and encourages those that hear it. And um, I really appreciate you taking the time. I, I appreciate the way you've eloquently um, put your points across and been really transparent as well bro like there's not not a lot of people will come on here and be so open about the things that they've made mistakes on and for for such a young man to come and do that like i commend you it's it's, it's amazing there's power in the testimony we're all trying to do this as best as we can and it's really relieving to hear when people um do have these struggles do have these contentions and um you know in christ we overcome that so i really appreciate that transparency i'm sure I've got a feeling this won't be the last one we do, bro. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I reckon there's probably a few more stories in the bank there, but yeah. um, genuinely, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate you coming on, bro. I hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks for having me, bro. It's been a blessing. and I hope this is a blessing to so many people out there, man. Yeah, hallelujah. So, guys, that was me getting down with the youth and all of that. But, uh, yeah, no, I really appreciate you um, uh, taking the time to listen. Again, like, subscribe, get on the comments, get on the comments in there, share some love, get some encouragement going on there. Let us know how this has affected you, this conversation has blessed you. Uh, if not, uh, and, and you don't, that's fine as well. Um, but again, from our house to yours, Shalom, we love you, God bless, Yah willing, we'll see you on the next one.